everyone, this is Andrea Huspany. I'm the Special Projects Director at Entrepreneur.com and I am here with Chris Winfield. He is a marketing expert and entrepreneur himself. Mm. And we are bringing you Tough Love Tuesday. It's our last Tough Love of Season oh, no. 2. But it's our Facebook series in which we are connect side hustling entrepreneurs with the best advice, resources, and guides from the top world's top experts, including Alan Brower. Um, I'll get to him in one second. Uh, just to give you a little bit of background, besides working at Entrepreneur, I'm also a side hustler. I have a website called This Dog's Life. Um, obviously, it's for dog lovers. And so, just like all side hustlers out there, I struggle with enough hours in the week to get my passion project to the next level. So, these people are not only going to be providing me advice, they are going to provide every single person out there advice on how to build a business, build a customer base, build a brand, and most importantly, monetize. And they are, uh, these experts are all providing it for free, so I'm super excited about that. Um, today we are going to be talking about how to build an e-commerce store that is profitable. Um, and that is like how to get customers to actually want to buy your product and also how to use advertisers to your benefit and not loss. So those are two really big areas that um, I think are important to entrepreneurs and I don't think that they necessarily know how to do. Uh, today, to help us with that, we have to how to turn your idea into a multi-million dollar product line. We have Alan Brower. He's one of the entrepreneurs uh, behind the popular Best Self Co. It's a site that features an array of products to help people become their best self. So I'm so excited yeah. to have you. Thank you for having me. Here. And I'm going to have Chris take over and provide a little bit more about Alan. Thank you, Andrea. Hey, guys, what's up? Thank you for joining us here. As Andrea mentioned, this is it for season two. And luckily, we saved the best for last. No offense to all the other guests. <laughs> Just kidding. I love them all. Uh, it, with my friend Alan, Alan Brower. I'll talk about him in a minute, but let me just give you a quick thing before we get started. So, one request. If you are watching this, tell us where you're joining us from. I want to know. I always go back and read everything. And also, if you really, really want to help out, hit the share button right now. Hit the love button, the like button, maybe the haha -ha button, whatever. <laughs> hit something. Take an Definitely action. Not the frowny face button. No, no, this is a very interactive show, and it's all about you. And basically, the idea behind this show was I saw that there's so much information out there, so much bad information, and you know all these people coming and telling you you should do all these different things. So, and that this was happening also with Andrea with her business and trying to you know run. She's special projects director and entrepreneur and running a business on the side and you know going in all these different directions. So I said, listen, I'll bring in the best of the best people to tell you exactly what to do to take your business to the next level and that's what we've done and one of the best of the best is the man to my right so if you're joining us at home you're left and his name is Alan Brower and let me give you a quick rundown for Alan I always like to read the bios because I want to make sure I get it right and not just tell you what I think of the person so he's the co-founder his co-founder is actually here with us watching in the wings uh, Catherine who is also amazing. So Alan's a co-founder behind the eight-figure business, Best Self Co. Alan and his co-founder, Catherine, launched Goal Setting Self Journal on Kickstarter and since then have opened up an e-commerce store featuring an array of products to help people become their best self. These are amazing. Where can people go to find your products real quick so we can post a link? You can find our products at bestself.co. Ooh, dot co. All right. For the second year in a row, the company, Best Self Co., has received Shopify's Build a Bigger Business Award, a competition that recognizes businesses who have successfully taken their business to the next level. They just got back from a trip with to Tony Robbins Island in Fiji. They were ringing the bell on the New York Stock Exchange, you know, with Tim Ferriss, all these different things. The, these people are, they, they walk the walk. The company in two short years is a multi-million dollar company. So we're super, super excited to have you. Also, before we really get started, and I always do this, uh, if you guys have questions. So this is your chance to get questions answered. We're going to leave time at the end for questions with Alan. So questions around uh, your business ideas, around the e-commerce, around Kickstarter, around all these different things. Ask questions. The best ones I'm going to ask and so be specific. All right. And finally, 
Let's just get into it. No more finally. <laughs> Let's just go. Tag someone you think would enjoy this video. Ooh, yes. Yeah. All right. So, and if somebody from Entrepreneur can just post the link for Best Self Co, that'd be awesome. So you can check out their journals, their products, and. They look amazing. I yeah. need one of those. All right. Definitely need one. Let's get right into it. So. All right, people. So, where do you want to explain kind of where you're at with e-commerce, sure. and we'll get and let's just. I want to just get Alan's brain on your business right sure. now. Sure. So, um, just like everyone, I so I have this dog's life. It's been a content site for a couple of years. It's just been like kind of a passion project where I was like writing about dog news, dog events in New York City, and I've kind of expanded it to be more general, um, but I've always wanted to have an e-commerce component, always, always, always. And so after a lot of time and a lot of research and actually a lot of help from people on this series, I've come down to launch my own product. Um, and it's going to be a doggy dental kit. I know, sounds very exciting, but it's very, very much um, in need. And so actually literally right now where I'm at is I created a page for uh, pre-orders. Okay. And so I think, you know, you know, when it comes to it, it's like I need help attracting people to that page. Just like anyone would need help attracting someone to a Kickstarter page or like their e-commerce page. So just in the beginning stages, like how do you use like content or you know, content or like what do you do to get these people to come to your page? How'd you guys do it? Yeah, that's what I want to know. Let's break okay. it down. Yeah. All right. <laughs> And like, um, what are some of the lessons that other people, because I know you you did a Kickstarter, but what are some of the things that anyone can do? Sure. But first I have a question for you. What's in a doggy dental kit? Sure. What does the kit include? So the kit includes, um, it includes uh, dental powder. Mm -hmm. So you just put the powder on your dog's food. And it's all natural. And it you, works to like fight the plaque, help the gums, and freshen the breath. Cool. And then we have a dental stick too, which you give daily, and it does basically the same things. Great. Do you have a dog? I do. You do? I do. I have a miniature dachshund, a miniature oh. long-haired dachshund. Yeah. Well, I'll her name's said, Riley. Oh, mm -hmm. a miniature. Oh, the I bet so What are you cute. supposed to do right now? <laughs> so let me know if you're interested in buying the product, and I'll send you a link. Please send me the link after the show. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I will. <laughs> all right. So, so, all right. Now that you know what's in a doggy yeah. dental kit, so yeah. So, do you want to? It'd be really interesting. Start? Yeah, that's what I'm interested. How did in. you start? <laughs> sure, I'll tell you how we started. Right. Um, we had an idea for a product, but before going out and producing that product, yeah, we said. Let's be smart about this and see if other people want this before we go out and mass produce this. Yeah. Because it's pretty expensive in order to do that. Um, and you're doing a great job right but now. But I didn't do that. But you only ordered 500 units. Right. I yeah. think our minimum order quantity was about 10,000. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. So it was okay. a little different. Okay, cool. Yes. So 500 units you can do, but last thing I want is a garage full of 10,000 units of something that I can't move. Exactly. <laughs> yes. So. Last which, thing your wife wants. Which I actually have, by the way. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I have that from a different business. Yeah. Uh, but what we decided to do was, okay, who would like this product? And the product that we're talking about is the self-journal. Catherine and I created the self-journal for ourselves in the beginning as out of a blank moleskin. And we created this framework to help keep us accountable, focus on our high leverage goals, and focus on the key things that we needed to do on a daily basis in order to hit those goals. So we said, okay, high productive people, high achievers would like to would like this product. Yeah. Who of my friends are high achievers that would like this? And that's your first barrier. Okay, let me go to my friends, let me see if they like this. And what we end up doing sometimes is we don't even tell our friends that we're doing yeah, this. Yeah, I haven't told some of my close friends. I know, and it's horrible because like, you're from keeping high it school friends, I'm like no. You're, you're keeping it so close to your yeah. chest that now you don't know how to talk about it because mm -hmm. you can't even talk to your friends about it. Yeah. I invited most of your high school friends to watch this one. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what now she's up know. to. Yeah. Yeah. Now they know. Yeah. Yeah. Out of things that she they could find out, this is pretty good. <laughs> like you know, like to be let's be honest. <laughs> You can find out you're a mass murderer, you know. Not on this show. Yeah. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> That's on Thursdays. <laughs> right. <laughs> True crime. Yeah. So it's going to your friends and finding out 
what do they like about this? Why do they like it? And it's not even producing it yet. It's coming to them with a concept. And what you'll find is they'll, they'll tell you specific languaging that you can then use in your marketing copy ah. for your other customers that you want to reach. So it's going to your friends, finding out what do you like about this, what don't you like. Then it's going to the next level of finding strangers who would be interested in this product. And one way that we've built, and just so you know our hierarchy, it's we built a list of people, then we launched on Kickstarter to that list of people. The Kickstarter was funded within 28 hours. I'm still, I'm still upset because I can't say it within a 24 day. 24 hours, <laughs> yeah, exactly. 28 is actually kind of cool, though. I guess. It is. It's it not is. 24, but... Right, but 24 sounds almost fake. Like, you know, that, yeah. it's kind of cool. Like, it, even, I know it's true, but, like, if you made up, that would be 28 would be perfect. Yeah, like, 28.3 totally... hours yeah. or something. So I like it. Yeah. <laughs> it's a better story. So, uh, and then we finished that campaign at the end of the 34 days, uh, and we built a whole business around a single product. What was your goal and how much did you raise? In So our external goal was $15,000. That's what we needed for the first batch run. Um, 10000 But what we had was actually an internal goal between Catherine and I of $200,000. Oh, wow. Yes, so and that was like pie in the sky. We kind of like were a little nervous about that one. Oh, it would be really great if we hit it, but you know, if we don't, we at least came pretty close. Yeah. Well, we ended up exceeding that goal, and uh, finished the 34 days at uh, $323,000. I wish I could whistle. Yeah. That's a lot. <laughs> Good. That's a lot. Yes. Yeah. I want to back up for a minute. So, yeah. But I'm just setting the... Yeah, the yeah. The hierarchy. Yeah. Okay. So, but backing up, because I want to actually break down the Kickstarter side a lot because it's fascinating. And also, just I want to break down the what you mean by the internal versus the external. But getting before that, so you said you built up the list of people. Yeah. So, yes. And then so you were launching to something. So mm -hmm. for people out there who are listening or, and they're like, oh, I want to do that, I want to have it. Like, I think there's a lot of people who are like, oh, Kickstarter sounds so easy, so you know, let me just do that. And like, what I want people to understand is like, what went in, what goes into that? So I know you also work with people and help them with their Kickstarter campaigns and you know, or as a consultant or like just getting in, uh, as a advisory or whatever. So like, what, when you form that list, how do you do that? Yeah. Like, why, what are people interested in? I think that's like a huge thing. Even for like, just like the e-commerce component, it's like you, re I mean, that's better if you can just, have a huge list to like then introduce it to. Mm -hmm. So how did you? Or yeah. even just a passionate list. It sure. doesn't have to oh, be yes. huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Now, regardless of whether you're launching on Kickstarter or yeah. launching directly to yeah. uh, your Amazon website, whether it's just an Amazon page, or whether you're launching to a Shopify store that you built that has multiple products, yeah. the first thing that you need to do is build that list. Yeah, so, so how I do we do know. that? Yes. Yeah. So you write content that people would be interested in that your target market is. so Around the product correct. that you're going to sell. Okay. So for you, you've done a great job. For two years, you've produced doggy content. Right. But not so dentist, but yeah, I get it. Correct. But what you can do, you now have a, re a reader base. Yeah. You have, uh, how many people hit your site? 15,000? Yeah. 15,000. Yeah. That's, that's a great start. Although they, all those 15,000 people may not be on your list, yeah. they're at least coming to read what you have to offer. Right. And most of it's doggy related. Right. So your ideal client base yep. is coming to your site. Perfect. That's half the battle, really. Yay. <laughs> if not the whole battle. <laughs> <laughs> right. But uh, if, if you don't have 15,000 people coming to your site, what you can do is write content and publish it on sites like Andrea's or other sites that have the the traffic and bring them back to your site. Now, how do you bring them yeah. back to your site? That's through a content upgrade. So you have the main piece of content, and then you have the content upgrade. So give me your name and email address, and I will give you a PDF download of X, Y, and Z. The best recipes, all natural recipes for your dog. The, the best home remedies to cure your dog's breath. Um, something along those lines. So I have a question. So when you reach out to a different publication, you're like, mm -hmm. hey, I want to write, they will 
let you put a link at the bottom, or how do you get that? I don't know how to get that upgrade. Nor normally, they'll let you um, or link out to the. They'll, they'll let you link back to either your page or your profile or whatever it is, but uh, okay. that's that's determined by you yeah. guys before it's yeah. written. I'm curious. So is th so that was a part of your strategy initially? Correct. How did you find? So walk people through. How do they find like the blogs or the websites that like? What did you do to target the right places? So because there's a lot of people out there. So I'm guessing you were focused on like productivity or life hacks, things like that. Yes. So like, but there's some that are just going to be junk. You know, there's some. So what did what do you do for Andrea? Like, what should she be doing to find the ones that are going to lead to results? So one thing that we did, we po published on medium.com, and there was a lot of medium sub forms on there. And medium back then, about 24 months ago, yeah. it was pretty new. Yeah. Now it's much bigger. Yeah. It's a little bit more saturated. Yeah. But you can still find your target market there. Another target market that you can find is Reddit. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people yeah. interested in all different subreddits, whether it's productivity, entrepreneurship, business, yeah. Dog related, mm -hmm. animal related, dogs. pet related, so on and so forth. And then you can find subforms or Facebook groups yeah, how did in you, each of those areas. How did you do the Facebook groups and forums? Did, and did you spam them? No, no. Okay. So you can't spam, number one, because no, no one likes to spam. Yeah, right. so how did you engage? So what you have to do, it's going to be a long process. But the process is going to pay dividends if you do it correctly. Mm. And what that process is, is come in and generally want to give back and yeah. generally communicate and, and want to be a part of that system. It's interesting the when you talk about the it's a long process but it pays dividends, like doing the work is actually the shortcut. You know, like that's it's the crazy is. thing. It's so seriously. Alan also has something called turn on the hustle and turn off the bullshit. And you know, it's always like around stuff like this though. Mm -hmm. Like you put in the work and then it pays the dividends. I think that's like one of the biggest things is that people are looking for all the shortcuts. They're looking for that magic bullet and you know, what's the easiest, simplest way and uh, instead yeah. of like actually what can I create? What can I give back? Yeah. So uh, it's good to hear you say that. Yeah, and I don't believe in tactics or hacks or anything like that because those don't span the the test of time mm. they may work now but they're not going to work you know once you have a real business and then once you have a real business what do you do you yeah. rely on tactics and hacks it, it's not good so i like fundamental strategies that work time I'm after like time like authentic yeah yeah so when you go to those groups comment if someone sees a post and you know something about it, like, hey, I've got a question about my dog because he's acting funny or doing this, that, the other, just type in, oh, well, my dog did the same thing. Right. Or, oh, I found a great article on this. It may not even be your article, right. but just provide some value in there. So that way they see your face, they know that you're giving back a little bit. And then when you publish a, a, a post on your own site, or when you launch your giveaway, which we'll get to in a little bit, now you can say, hey guys, I'm, I'm, I really love this group. I really love this community of people. Um, here's a piece that I wrote. I hope you find some value in it. If you like it, please you know, download the, the content or share it with someone you think would benefit from it. But it's not going in and copying and pasting in to 50 groups the same exact message over and over. Because mm. each group has their own nuances, their own, their yeah. own language, and you need to know how to address them. So. And there might be like overlapping members in those groups, and then they're like, sweet, I already got that yeah. from yeah. someone else. Exactly. Yeah. That's a good idea. And then forums, I know, I think I've tried this. You just search like dog and forum or whatever the forum is mm -hmm. on Google, and you kind of just go there. Yeah, same thing. Same thing as a Facebook group, really. So I just have a weird question. So I, I, I don't, I, so people don't take up so much of their time doing that. How much time did you commit to being engaged in these groups in the beginning? Like, because I was like, if you were like with 50 groups, I was like, that would take up all my day. It wouldn't take up all your day. Here's a quick uh, hack that you can, I say hack. <laughs> After we just talked about it. I do it all the yeah, time. I, I contradict Great. myself. So Great. yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, I don't believe in it. Here's a hack. <laughs> <laughs> I do it constantly. No, but, but it's, it's uh, great. I'm, I'm really big on productivity, so I don't yeah. want to waste my time. So I try to get straight to the, the biggest lever possible. Yeah. 
So how can I streamline the time that I have in the day, which is 24 hours, just like everybody else? I send a text message reminder that has a Google spreadsheet attached in the text message. And because I use Mac, the text message comes through automatically. It's an yeah, yeah. automatic repeat, the same time every day. I click the spreadsheet. The spreadsheet opens up. It's hyperlinked to every group in that um, niche or yeah. genre. And I just write the date next to it, the last time I left off, and now I go right where to pick up. And every day I just go in for 30 minutes, and and now I spend 30 minutes that's in each smart. group. That's smart. That's not a hack. That's just being organized. That's yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's good. Yeah. That's, that's really good to know. Mm -hmm. That's Ooh, smart. That's really, I love yeah, that. I like yeah. that, too. All right. So, and by the way, and I just want to just repeat this, because I think it's important. So. Alan and Catherine have grown an eight-figure business in you know two years by you know so it's not that the and that's why I think it's really important that these like the he put in the work and everything but it also you know it allows you to grow quickly because now it's it's like become exponential growth you mm -hmm. know and that the, as we were talking about before this on the Instagram live about. You know, they just did a retreat, and, and they the place was too small for you know that they had booked yeah. already. Like yeah. so, it just you know these things, even though it might feel like a lot in the beginning, that's okay. Like doing the things that don't scale, like as Paul Graham talks about, and yes. I think it's just so important. Um, so anyway, I just want to harp on that because I know that's an important thing for you and, doing, and how you do things. Yeah, and doing things that don't scale. If you if you don't get one person to sign up from your email list from that community that you participated in for 30 days, maybe you at least establish relationships with mm. people and you don't have their email address, that relationship is better than any email address you'll ever get. Yeah. So. Which is nice because sometimes I feel like people are like, I want all these results, results, results. Like I have a, I have a goal, I have a goal, and then it's like, this isn't happening, so I failed, <laughs> or yeah. this idea failed, and so it's, it's nice to be like, success can come in different ways. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about giveaways a little bit. Well, first, do you have anything else to add to that? Because I was like, any other content things? Um, I think you did a great job. I just want to make sure. <laughs> no, Chris, because I'm very interested what Alan has to I say. I would love to hear more. No, I, I, I'll share a little bit more on the content. <laughs> I think you did a great job. That was great. <laughs> on the fly, praise. Yeah. That was perfect. Uh, so re regarding the content, don't feel overwhelmed. Don't do... Uh, what you did writing two pieces of, a co of content a day was it? Yeah. Oh yeah. my gosh. Two news yeah, articles. I know. All right. No so, one's like that idea yet. <laughs> write, write one solid piece every two weeks. And then one ooh. really robust, like the most value you can put inside a piece of content every two weeks. All right. And and what will happen is because it's such a good piece of content, people will care and they'll yeah. read it and then they'll share it and then it starts getting this organic traffic and growth off of it. When you do that, do you syndicate all of it mm. to that content to like every single person yes. out there? Okay, that's what I want to know. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yes. No, that's great. I've, I've heard that a million times. A million times. Like after you hear something a couple times, do it. What about after a million? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Chris, we're getting into giveaways. Go. <laughs> No, I I just want to actually go back to that for one second. So in yeah, now that I <laughs> no, we're, we're all over the place. Away. No, <laughs> we're never getting no. <laughs> so, but in terms of how like would that be? So when you're creating that content, is that one of your goals for the day? Like, is that like creating part of that? Like, how do you break? I'm I'm you know I'm very interested in, and I know you guys released the, the Chrome extension win the day, and you know which will help you. Pe so it actually. You guys should check that out. It's a free extension that they created. Um, maybe if somebody can post the link, winthedaycom Is that it? Yes. Yeah. Um, but win in the day. Win the day. Yeah. What does that mean? It means if you win the day, you win the week. If you win the week, you win the year. If you win multiple years, you have you win at life. Yes. So if you want to win at life, get this. <laughs> but uh, the point being, like around so much of your stuff is focused around goals, and like, so I know that Andrea could hear like create this amazing piece of content. Like, how do you break that down so that it's not that so overwhelming? If, yeah. Exactly, because like, that can sound years. very yeah. overwhelming. And they're like, oh, this I need to build this huge, robust thing, and, and you stay up all night. Yeah. yeah. So I'm just curious how you break that down. It's chunking it down. Yeah. First, yeah, all right. If you know you want a a solid piece of content. Let's break it down. What are we going to talk about? Who, who's our target market regarding this piece of content? 
let's get the fundamentals in place. From there, let's chunk it down into an outline. Based on this topic, what is the outline pieces that need to bring people from interest to being a little bit more intrigued about the topic that you just spoke about that they would want a content upgrade based off this content. Ah. So after you break it down, it's just a simple outline, intro, yeah. topic one, topic two, topic three, outro. Something along so those you, lines. And then do you post that content upgrade to an article that is like a little bit, like kind of like a teaser? So it's like, you know, if it's like 10 productivity tips, you're like one productivity tips to get the, the other nine do a content upgrade? Or no, we'll I would normally just give the good, valuable piece of content that you just wrote free up front. Okay. okay. The content upgrade is something in addition okay. to that, gotcha. that article. Okay, cool. Yeah. Right, we're going to talk about giveaways, but first I want to <laughs> remind you, if you have questions for Alan, now is a good time about, to ask yeah. them. And shortly we'll get to all your questions, but if you have questions about e-commerce content, Winning the day, winning your life, productivity, <laughs> whatever. But really, the, uh, th this is just a great chance. So ask your questions. In this iPad, I will has the answers. So uh, Can you shake it? yeah, exactly. It's like the magic iPad. <laughs> All right, let's talk about giveaways. Hey, Why do they work? How did you use giveaways? them? All right. <laughs> so I'm actually very interested in this because I know we had this pre this conversation about it, and I I met someone at your unfair advantage event too that also was talking about how important giveaways are. And I didn't even like, doesn't, I did a giveaway last year and it failed. Why, tell me about it. So <laughs> I was like, like very session. impressed with my giveaway and, and I'll tell you what the guy suggested and I'll tell you what, um, maybe I did it wrong. But I did this giveaway, a holiday guide giveaway, like the best dog products that you can get for your dog. And I worked with like 10 vendors to get this huge like $500 worth package, like a dog bed from Casper, you know, like dog treats and this, and mm. it, okay, I'll tell you what I think I did wrong. It was gonna be an Instagram contest, and it was like, you need to tag all the vendors to do this, and then, you know, go to this link on Instagram to be a part of it. And so I think, so I, I mean, I got some people, but I think I really wanted it to be bigger, and I think what I did wrong was, first I made it too complicated, and secondly, the guy said, he's like, you should be driving, you should be driving ads behind it. And I don't know if you agree with that, but he was able with his giveaway build his Justin, list. yeah, to okay. like a hundred thousand um, in six months. And, yeah, in six yeah. months, and so that that's what I think I did wrong because I thought I had a really good giveaway, and I kind of want to do it again this year, mm -hmm. but I don't want to fail again. Sure. So tell me about why giveaways are so great, and so, like it sounds like you had a great I had a offering. great yes. <laughs> right. The the <laughs> way that you made yeah, people awesome. enter yeah. was a little. Uh, the, the barrier to entry was a little too high. Yep, I agree. Yeah. So some of the rules for a giveaway are you, you want to have something like Andrea had, a Casper dog bed, other dog products, pet-related products, uh, maybe a, a subscription to uh, dog box? What is it called? Bark box. Bark box. Yeah. I thought you were going to say like the pet monthly like, oh. magazine. Or something. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I was like, I don't know box. any like dog magazines. <laughs> yeah, bark box. Bark box. <laughs> and what you'll do is you'll bundle that up and then you'll offer that giveaway to people in exchange for their name and email ad and an address in order to win. The last thing that you want to do is put an iPad up for a giveaway and say, all right, dog friends, if you like this, you know, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. enter your name and email address for it. Because then you'll just have anyone entering and yeah. now yeah. you don't have a targeted It's a really list. important point yeah. So th that he said there and I just want to pull that out. So meaning uh, you'll see sometimes the ads pop up where it says like, we're giving away a free iPad or whatever. Like you want it only to be people that it's gonna really be worth it yeah. to them. So mm -hmm. in your case, it, like around productivity or we around- had so We gave software, so like LastPass. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, I forget what the other software was. Uh, books related around productivity, business, performance, positivity. Self-development. Uh, yeah, yeah self exactly. We gave away a, a Muse headband. Mm -hmm. uh, and we bundled all of that together for our giveaway. Because they're not going to just give away like an iTunes gift yeah. card or something yeah. because you want it, like somebody to enter who's going to be, Interested hopefully, a good customer. Yeah. 
Cool. So, Sorry, I just want to pull that out because it's such an important part. So then, what I did wrong, and maybe other people are doing wrong, is the execution. So what did you do? Did you put it on your website? Did you put it on Instagram? Did you put it on Facebook? Like how? How did you? How did you do it? So <laughs> email us. I don't know. So yes to all of that, but we wanted one specific goal. Let's collect email addresses of people who would be interested in this giveaway, because if they're interested in this giveaway, they'll be interested in the products that we're about to offer. So now that we've narrowed it down to, I need to get their email addresses, OK, what tools are out there that let me get people's email addresses through a giveaway? Mm. There's things like Rafflecopter. There's something that we use called King Sumo Giveaways. Noah Noah's. Was, Noah was on your show. Yep. Oh, it's one of his software great. tools. And uh, the thing that I love about King Sumo giveaways is when someone signs up for the giveaway, they get a special URL that's tagged specifically for them. If they share that URL on their social sites and someone signs up through it, they get three more entries. So it incentivizes them to share. Ah, so, so you it say creates like, this viral fest. You're like, share my, your URL well, and you get three more it, entries. When they opt in, yeah. It'll say, it'll tell them that specifically. Uh. And then it's really good then in also the confirmation email that you send to make sure that they know that, that this is your specific URL, that every time that you share and other people, you're getting more entries. So, Correct. because the thing about it that's important is that it allows, it gives people a reason to want to share because their chances of winning go up. Because the other way, most people don't want to share because they're like, I don't want anyone else to know because then yeah. their chance yeah. of winning go down. Um, so kingsumo.com, it's That's a great, um, yeah, we had Noah on here. You've been talking to him every day. I know, I didn't know he, yeah. I yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He did kingsumo. I didn't know he did contests too. It was everything, okay? It was everything. Um, was that like your, Biggest help, you think, that, that idea? I would say it would be one of the top levers that we pulled in order to, to get a lot of emails before and launching. where did you get most of your email sub or the email subscribers from? Was it social, or was it when they went to your website? So we would publish posts and the giveaway that were live on our site to social gotcha. and bring people back to the site. Okay. So when you launch this giveaway, go into the Facebook groups. Yeah, I just hey did. gang, uh, I, I just put together this big package. Um, I'm trying. Uh, we have something in the works, and I figured a great way to start off on the right foot is to just give something away for free that you would love. And all you have to do is enter your name and email address. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And for your chance to win. Oh, and by the way, make sure you share your special URL because you get more entries. Yeah. It's coming into it with providing value first. Yeah. And you don't need to go out and purchase. All of these products are all up front. What you can do is say, mm. uh, either one, work with the manufacturer, yeah. like you did, to get the product for free or at a discount, or offer it after you, you validated that enough people want this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and since you already have some people on your list and you have a good social following, you can also start with seeding those people to with the contest so that the, they're opting and they're sharing it and everything yeah, no, like no, that. No, 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 that's mm -hmm. good. Okay, I like it. No, I, I think I did it wrong and I, I think I made it too complicated. It was a great prize. Yeah, it was such a I good prize. I would have entered. But yeah. I also think I was like, take a picture with your dog. I mean, I did That's all a lot. Of, yeah, I wouldn't too, have entered. Yeah, too much stuff. Like tagging, yeah. it was just like too yeah. much. So I'm I get gone. it, I get it, I get it. I don't even, yeah. So my wife actually did this strategy a couple months ago uh, to with launch uh, for her skincare line. Yeah. Uh, she developed an all natural skincare solution and she's What's it like, called? Rewind by Lauren Ashley. Rewind? Yes. By Lauren Ashley? Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that the URL? Rewindbylaurenashley.com. And then if you want the product, it's slash timeless. Mm. Yeah. I love skincare stuff. I'm like obsessed. We okay. just had Bobby Brown yeah. on here last week, so yeah. Yeah. we're all about the skincare <laughs> now. <laughs> she launched a giveaway. What did she, she package? Like she packaged, uh, so her, her line is all natural. Yeah. So she doesn't want like harsh chemicals and stuff. Super and smart. It's gluten free, paraben free, all that great stuff. Animal, animal cruelty free. So. Perfect. I do look at that a lot. Yeah. yeah. Totally. Um, she launched a giveaway and, and got 3,000 people's emails. Shut up! In, in one month. If my wife could do it, oh my gosh. <laughs> so how did she do it? Did she just post it 
different places? Yeah, she uh, she packaged up uh, products that were all natural and skincare related. So now she's re so it's not just skincare, yeah. it's all, all natural, natural skincare. So she got really narrow and niche with it, and then uh, reached out to uh, a couple influencers and said, "Hey, I think this would be a great value for your audience if." If uh, if they got this for free, it elevates the influencers. So it, that's another thing that could help is reaching out to influencers. There you go. And all these shelters, I mean, there's so many that they have yeah. huge followings, and you're very interested in helping them. Yeah. All your dogs are rescues, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They are rescues. Okay. Okay. So you get the audience. I love these ideas. Okay. Let's. We're gonna have to switch from giveaways. Boo. So you have. You just the, got here. <laughs> <laughs> so you had the audience, you launched yes. a store. <laughs> what do people do, like, now? So what now did you, you do? So now you have the audience. Uh, well, what, we did something a little differently. We launched to a Kickstarter, yeah. yep. which, was a, which was different. We didn't launch straight to the store, but the concept's still the same. You get people excited for what's coming. You just don't put your store up and then say, hey, guys, it's live. Go buy yeah. it whenever you want. You build anticipation. How do you do that? You, you set a, a date in the future, and then that audience that you just got, now you, you build anticipation saying, hey, uh, you know, the end of this month, on this date, get ready, we're going to launch something new, something exciting that I think you'll be really excited about. And then as it's getting closer, you reveal a little bit more and a little bit more, and then on launch day, it's, okay, we're live, but we're only live for, you know, um, uh, we only have this much product available. In your yeah. case, you really do only have 500 yeah, units. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have 500 units. The first 500, we sell out, and then we're going to have to go back and place in a new order. So when you did that mm. and you're, like, doing these little reveals, yep. it was little reveals, like, it wasn't, like, more products. It was, like, a little reveal in, a, like, a part of the journal or like hey we we got the packaging done or, or what did you do when you were like so we built anticipation leading up to the Kickstarter campaign and what uh -huh. we did was hey the Kickstarter campaigns this day yeah you yeah, know yeah. when we're gonna go live but if you're on this list you get first dibs on the early bird specials uh, meaning you get the deepest discount there is gotcha and you're the first to to know about it you're the first to get access to it we're not sharing it to social we're not sharing it uh, to influencers, you guys are, are our community, and we we want to rally together. Gotcha. Yeah, that's so good. And during that process, it's hey, we're in New York, we're filming the Kickstarter video. Hey, we're uh, we we just finished um, the landing page. Uh, you could check out the preview here, but it, we're still not ready to buy or yeah. to launch and go live. And just give them little that's make them I, a part confusing. of the journey, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. that's what I was wondering because like I know there's like those like dribble emails or whatever they're called, but it's like, how do you keep them excited f throughout the journey until you're ready to launch? And it's just kind of giving them that inside glimpse. Yeah. How would you do it if it was just like a friend who asked you to keep you keep them updated? So meaning, instead of thinking of it as like a drip email or anything know, like I that, know. like just like thinking of it as like if it was your friend right. and I think from high school who was like, oh, this is what you're up to? Keep me in the loop, Andrea. Yeah. Like you it's, would just be sending like pictures and being like, hey, what's up? Right. Like, and and yeah. it can be like that, right? The first box came in, here, or here's the first sample. Right. Snap picture of it, send it an email. Yeah, that's what I think, yeah. It's like when people- Sound effects. <laughs> it's, not, it's like remind me of like Batman or something. Pow! Oh, bang! That was great. I like it. Uh, yeah, just giving them that like feeling like they're. That's part what of they this want. Team, this they don't want anything community. like completely like, like very polished or perfect or anything. Like I think make them and you guys still do that. You're still bringing people along with like your journey and being like open. Uh, you know what, what whatever it is. Like yeah. I think it's an important like a big part. So it's like they have. Have a really, really, and I know a, a, you know quite a bit about their business, but they have a strong, passionate community, and they're a company that's selling products, you know. But people know who Alan is. People know who Catherine. Yeah. You know, there's like real people behind it, mm -hmm. and I think that that's one of the big differentiators between you and you know somebody else who's doing the exact same thing because it's it's that real feel. And is that something that you guys do? Is like put your face like it's not just the product, like you're part of the product, or no? We are part of the product. I mean, we said, like, hey, we, we're experiencing this problem. Yeah. 
Are you experiencing mm -hmm. this too? Well, guess what? We found a solution yeah. for it, and the solution is X, Y, and Z. Yeah. In your case, it's doggy dental care. Yeah, okay. And, and now it's relatable. People yep. don't relate to things and stuff. They relate to people. Right. So don't be scared to put your voice behind it. Don't nice be scared story, to... Yeah. You know, show your hand in the picture or something. <laughs> you have thumb on it. Yeah. All right, so let's say she, you launch, you're getting some traction. How do then, do you spread that, get the word out to more people? Like, how do you expand and grow? Mm. So now it comes in, now that you actually have a product to sell and you're making money, you can then use money to make money. And this is marketing. So what do, you, what do you mean by that? Use money to make money, yes. known as marketing, yes. So what, what I like to think of it is, <laughs> is your profit or what you're selling the product at, sales yeah. price, minus what you got it for. That difference is what you can spend on marketing to acquire a new customer. So if you, you, I buy a product for 10 bucks, I sell it for 20, I have $10 to use to acquire. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now that you know you have $10 to acquire a new customer, people are probably getting scared. Well, then you have no profit, but yeah. you have a customer. And what can you do with someone who's already paid you money? Give them something else to pay you money. Right. Right? So you just roll out. You know? Exactly. So um, the way that I, I look at it is, OK, now that we have $10, quote unquote, to, yeah. to use on marketing, who can we target and spend eight dollars to acquire a customer now we now we made a two dollar profit yep. and now we roll that two dollar profit into acquiring the next customer and when you do this what you'll find is the first day you'll get one customer the second day you'll get one customer the third day you'll get one customer but by the fourth day now you have two customers and then you get two customers the next day and then slowly and surely, now you're getting hundreds of customers a day if you just keep putting it back into this hamster wheel. Gotcha. I feel like there could be so many good graphics for that. Like if we had yeah. a nice graphic budget. Wait, uh, put one together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like, I, that's why I was like smiling. I was just like, in my head, I was picturing it like real like news graphics. Like it would just boom, 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 and like little sound effects. So yeah, let's think about that for next uh, season. <laughs> but it was a great, I mean, it was such a great like way to explain it. It was one of the clearest ways. So yeah. Yeah. And you just put in you, what was your big focus on marketing? What was your big, was it Channel? Facebook? Yeah. Uh, it would be Facebook. Yeah, everyone's, everyone says Facebook ads like change their business model and I'm, I'm excited and I, what do you think, no? No, I'm, um, yeah. I mean, I, I've I, heard that from so many people. The, you, the insole woman, you, other people are just like, I just turned to Facebook and I'm like, is this magical? No. No. I mean, there's work. There's work. <laughs> that happen. He didn't is, just plug it, it on. But it's the Facebook like, money tree. Uh. Chris, but it does seem like Chris. it's like the number one channel. And is that, you know, no one, some people. Why is that it. for you? Um, for us, it's, uh, it's repeatable. So yeah. we found, and there's going to be a lot of trial and error in the, be in the beginning. Yeah. You may lose money in the beginning. Yeah. But what you're trying to do is get information and get insight. So let's say, I know this is going to be scary, $100 a day for seven days. $700. But what information you're going to get with that $700 is going to be invaluable moving forward. And that information is like what worked, what didn't work, who engaged, who didn't engage. Correct. So what demographics are working? Yeah. Who is that person, right? So what's their age? What age is, is the person that's coming to our site and buying? Um, is it male or female? Uh, what are their interests? Well, where do they live? Then, yeah. then it's also down to the ads themselves. What image was the most engaging? Yeah. What uh, had the most clicks? What had the most likes or comments? Um, what copy worked well inside that ad? Yeah. And then what you can get from that seven day sprint, you can then strip out what doesn't work and just fill what did work and then do it again for seven days. And strip out what didn't work and put it in yep. what did. And then what you'll find is that's how you grow exponentially. 
Another graphic. Another right, graphic. I want to get to. Another. It's great. I want to get to. There's a lot of good questions. Ooh. I know you have a couple of final questions, but I want to go through um, the, these questions for Alan. And if you guys have questions, start sending them. But um, I just always ask uh, all the experts, and thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you for thank having you. me. Um, I was going to do like a Halloween pun, and I was like, no, it's not going to be Do funny. it. It's yeah, now you have year. to. It was, like, it was a beautiful experience. I wish Spooky. you had it. You scared me. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're going to cut. I think we're, there's a problem with our internet. Uh, <laughs> sorry, guys. We'll see you next year. Uh, <laughs> I'm blushing. Whatever, that was kind of funny. Okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think we saw, all the sound <laughs> cut out. Um, <laughs> we, okay. This is the time when our internet and the feed works perfectly. Great. <laughs> Chris, okay. Um, what is something, as an e-commerce expert, what is something that everyone's doing wrong? What is something that everything everyone's doing wrong? Or a lot of people. Um, I, I think the big trend right now in e-commerce is, oh, I'll just... Pick something up off of AliExpress mm. and you know drop ship that. Mm. There's no real, no one cares because yeah. everyone else is selling it, and there's no differentiating factor involved. So you can't really put a premium on that. Love so that. it's like more of a brand. You know, you have to build your brand. You have to build a brand. You have to build a community, and you also have to, to have a product that works and people care about. Yeah. Um, and what's a trend that people should be paying attention to? A trend that people should be paying attention to? Um, I find VR fascinating right yeah. now. I, I do because I think it, what it will do is it will immerse you into the products on, a, on an e-commerce level. It will immerse you into the products that you don't have already. In real time, so like, so oh, I, do, do I want to do I want to feel that in my like? What does that feel like if I were to have that? Yeah. Um, now I think we're a couple of years yeah. out from that That's to give it to everybody, but it's something that um, I think is really, really interesting. Cool. Well, thank you so much for helping. But we're gonna get into questions. I'm just saying thank you for me because <laughs> it's all about Chris now. <laughs> check out bestself.co, guys. You can check out all of their amazing products. It was spectacular. Um, <laughs> Um, okay, so we're gonna get I, to I the feel question. like she's got another one up. Yeah, time. <laughs> there's one more up her sleeve though. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna try to get this ship back on course. So Kevin Chen says, "What were the most crucial strategies you used for a pre-launch campaign? For your pre-launch campaign? For the pre-launch campaign, I think the strategies are what we talked about here: building the email list yeah. before launching." And how did we build the email list? It was through creating good content, great content, and putting it in the eyeballs, in front of the eyeballs of the people who would be interested. And also having a giveaway that was relevant to the product that we were about to launch. And then keeping people in the loop of what's happening as we're building that product. So I think those, those Gotcha. Does the pre uh, Carrie Ratza says, does the pre-launch campaign work for a social media-esque website where you don't have a product? Social media-esque. What Carrie, you might need to give us some clarity here <laughs> for so, that so one. Like does that mean like connecting people together? I yeah. think uh, a non-product. Um, like a network. Like, like I don't think a physical product. Sure. So like um, uh, almost like a dating app yeah. or a community. Facebook. Yeah. A social-esque network. Social-esque. Uh, yes, Website. it would. Yeah. Because what you can do is, if it's social-esque, don't make it Facebook where it's targeting everybody. Niche it down to, you know, dog people of New York City. Like, really, that, that niche, and then build out from there. But I think the same thing. Build hype. Get yeah. people excited about it. And then when it launches, look, there's more people there. I also think it's like, when they, a lot of people roll out the social networks, they have, like, lists, like... Here's your, you know, sign up, and you're, you know, you're on the wait list. That kind of builds hype because I'm like, I feel rejected. Mm, yeah. But not quite. Not quite. Right. Yeah. <laughs> doesn't doesn't sting too bad. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Angie Bryson says, "Tell me more about the conference slash retreat you meant." Oh, that would be 
unfair advantage. Um, yeah, that has. Or is that our re- team retreat? Or his team retreat? Either you can join his company and <laughs> maybe get to go to the next <laughs> team retreat, or we're, the we're conference <laughs> is uh, something called unfair advantage. That I run that's kind of invite only. You can follow me on uh, Facebook, Chris Winfield, and I get uh, some info. David Joseph says, do you recommend using any marketing or campaign management services for Kickstarter? Mm. Marketing or campaign management services for Kickstarter. Uh, None come to the top of my head, but I'm going to uh, look over Andrea's shoulder for Catherine. She says, I was gonna ask, no. I was going to ask that because I was thinking like, I was thinking about doing a Kickstarter product and I, or project and I feel like some side hustlers might think about that, but you're like, I don't have time to do anything and sometimes I'll outsource it to a group and I just didn't, and I've seen it and I've heard it and it's like, they're expensive. It's like 10, 20,000 just to get it and I didn't know what your thought is on that. So I'll tell you my thought on it. If you're going to launch something that you want your side project to become your full-time job, yeah. but you don't want to dedicate any effort or energy into it, why are you doing it anyway? Right, right, right. right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me just hire somebody to do this yeah. so I can, you know. Just right. boss people around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, and, but with that being said, Kickstarters are a lot of work. I don't recommend you just jump into one and think that it's going, going to be a cakewalk. It is, for as long as your campaign's going on uh, and months leading up to it and about months after, your yeah. full-time focus is that Kickstarter. I've heard yeah, it's like three months ramp up before you even launch. Mm-hmm. Okay, so going into that, sorry. Kevin Chen says, could you please tell me what types of marketing strategies you, you, you use to obtain such a large exposure on Kickstarter? I think it was everything you talked about. Yeah, just watch the beginning. And I don't know when that was uh, said. Uh, Serby JK says, how to pitch in your product when a similar product is already there in the market? So what? Um, there's a lot of day planners, there's a lot of journals that mm. were before us, um, before we launched. What we did, we niched it down to not just people who like to journal, but high achievers who like to yeah. uh, plan and structure their day, set goals, um, and wanted more structure in what they wanted to achieve in their lives. And I think if you just figure out what the product is and who it specifically targets, maybe a sub-segment, of that niche, um, that's how you can differentiate yourself. So I wouldn't be scared. Actually, it's better that there's people in the industry. It's proven, right? It's proven out right. that it actually works. That, right. You know? Well, that's what I think about my dog powder. So I get like a little nervous about these pre-orders, but I'm like, it's already out there. Yeah. It works. So I just gotta. I have to figure out what I'm doing. You Doesn't know, work as well. The other ones don't work Obviously. as well as hers. Um, all right, Alex Yershoff says, I'm able to offer a free sample of my product via, via USPS for about 75 cents total cost. How do I measure if this is a valuable investment to make? And how would you best launch the test? <laughs> so read it to me again. I'm, <laughs> I'm able to offer a free sample of my product for about 75 cents total cost, I guess, to ship it. Great. How do I measure if this is an, yeah, it's a weird question. If this is a valuable investment to make, uh, how best would you launch a test? So I guess. If there's a return, if customers come back and buy it after that? So I would actually just change the way that you're offering it. Don't offer it as you know, a test. Offer it as, you know, um, we're launching something new. You can get this sample of it for free, just pay shipping. Meaning we want to put this in the hands because we know you're going to love it so much. We want to put it in so many people's hands that we're going to give it to to you for free, just pay shipping. And what you'll do is instead of charging 75 cents, charge 275. Now you're making a $2 profit on it and you roll that $2 profit into acquiring more More customers. customers. Love it. Jessica Taya Mensha says, how do you pack a giveaway for a healthy breakfast? How do you package a giveaway? So they're coming up with a hack. So maybe it's like morning stuff that they would, yeah. morning, like healthy morning routine things that you could do. Sorry. Absolutely. So do it. No, well, that's what I was no, saying. Seriously. And then I was like, it was a question for Alan. So go. But <laughs> I want to, did you learn today? Yeah. 
It's yeah, all good. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. So what what products would you put in there, or how would you? So I would like. So I think that. she's very like healthy, like a healthy breakfast. So I uh -huh. would want something that's focused on meditation, maybe a uh, like a morning journal thing that we were talking about, mm -hmm. um, maybe a complimentary food item that is also considered healthy. That's like a non compete thing that you then you can also partner up with the company, the other companies to do things. This with. is a breakfast, right? Yeah. So we can put like what's not perishable really uh, oatmeal yeah uh, maybe it's a specific type of oatmeal um, maybe like little affirmation cards that you read once a day every morning or something like that yeah. to start your morning off on a right foot um, coffee coffee tea yeah, yeah. yeah. books mm -hmm. oils maybe it's a, uh, Aromatherapy. a coffee mug yeah. to go with it to start your morning off yeah think about what people do in the morning mm -hmm. so we were talking about this before a morning routine so reading or potentially getting like a code for like meditation studio the app or you know something like that as well um, stuff that your your people are going to be interested in I think that's like the big takeaway from Alan um, all right great so let me ask two more does does your marketing, Paul Hernandez asked, does your marketing plan work for services, in quotes, type of businesses? I, hopefully it's not services. Like, <laughs> so, this guy. <laughs> uh, for service-based businesses, yes, uh, it would. Um, I think you would just have to change the way that you're targeting. Uh, it wouldn't be a customer. It would now be a client. And uh, you would just... Package the information as if you were talking to, say, the CMO of a company or an organization. Ha uh, give information, advice, or tools that would help that business professional uh, in that organization. Say it's a service that I'm, I'm thinking B two B. Yeah, I hear service. Yeah, yeah. Sure. So I'm just making assumptions yeah. here, but um, right. Yeah. Or it could be because some of. The Maybe it's like we, massage or, or something. Or some of the people we've had on here, too, are like social media experts. Or sure, sure. So it's B2C in that way, but you can do the same thing. Well, that's really, though, they're more working for another business for the most part. What? Like if it's a social media expert? Yeah, who's hiring them? A business. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so you, you so would just B2B. go to LinkedIn groups, if it's B2B, yeah. LinkedIn groups where those business professionals hang out, that would give you the, yeah, the yeah. bid. Uh, Carissa Sturgeon says, how did you originally find people? Did you just go out and randomly ask people? I think, I guess, in your original, like, building, like, how, and then she, a follow-up, how did you find your audience? Sure. So, for us specifically, one, yeah. we reached out to friends first. Then we went to uh, forums, um, reddits and subreddits and Google Facebook, or, uh, Facebook groups. Those were the three areas that we focused on. And we built relationships with those people, we told people what we were up to, uh, what we were about to launch, provided value and content and information related to uh, our industry and what we were about to launch into. Love it, I'm gonna, yeah. last one, quick right, one. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, Maria Resurrection Lewis, I'm trying to build our inspirational brand. What niche will be the best giveaway ideas that can build the email list? Thanks. So if you're thinking motivational, uh, I would go uh, deep into like self-improvement, um, meditation and mindfulness. Uh, those are two big areas um, that would provide motivation. Uh, or that motivation niche falls into. Love it. I love it too. All right, we have to end just because we are out of time, but there's out. a lot of more questions. Maybe Alan will go back in and respond to some of these in person. Yes, I will. Um, I hope this was a treat for everyone. <sighs> I told you there was another one up her sleeve. Yeah, just cut the feed. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I wish you guys could see the production. Uh, Zach and Conrad, their looks of just dismay. And, you know, just it's very hostile work environment now. Uh, <laughs>
Thank you guys so much for joining us here. How about you take us out? And uh, Thank you guys so much for being part of Tough Love Tuesday Season 2. Thank you, Alan, and thank you, Chris, uh, for being part of this series. We really, really appreciate it. And we will be back in 2018, so stay tuned. And um, yeah. Where can people find out more about oh, This Dog's God. Life? <laughs> ThisDogsLife.co. Oh, you, you guys are both into the big, into the yeah. .co. So where, where do you want people, where can people learn more about you? Where can people learn and purchase your products? Um, I think the best place for you to learn about us and what we're doing and what it is that we're working on uh, would be bestself.co. So uh, taking over the co. <laughs> taking over the co. And also, if you guys want to check out, they recently launched a really cool Chrome extension called Win the Day. And you can find that at wintheday.com. Yes. And yeah, it's a free Chrome extension. And yeah, thank you so much. It was awesome. Thanks for having me. My name's Chris Winfield. And I, you can find me, Chris Winfield, anywhere on social media, chriswinfield.com. Actually, I want to bring Catherine over for a minute. <laughs> the other half. Come on, just say a quick goodbye. And <laughs> Here's Catherine, hey. and yeah, this is Alan's other half for business, and the, yeah, the the I was gonna say the brains behind the whole thing, but then, I don't know if that sounds that nice. So, <laughs> what am I doing here? <laughs> You're the beauty. You're the beauty. Exactly. So, thank you guys so much, and have an amazing day. And thank you for being here. Thank Happy, you. Halloween. Happy Halloween. Bye, guys.